Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EzraAdamation.com and welcome to my all new video series in Ezra Automation YouTube channel on BDD with Rec and Roll in year 2025. I have been teaching this behavioral driven development uh, using Specflow, using Cucumber and now with BDD with Rec and Roll. And once again, if you are really not heard about Rec and Roll, Rec and Roll is a tool built by the same authors of Specflow. But just that, uh, because Specflow is currently retired, you can't really use the Rec and Roll anymore. So if you just go and search for uh, Specflow uh, end of life, probably, uh, you will see that um, there is an announcement, uh, even in the Rec and Roll website, that the Specflow has reached its end of life starting December 31st, uh, 2024. So it's no more there. So we just have to migrate our existing uh, Specflow code all the way to uh to the new tools which is nothing but the rec and roll and rec and roll if you have worked with specflow before rec and roll is going to be pretty much exactly the same kind of tool there is no big difference between specflow uh, versus rec and roll they both uh, just works and behave pretty much exactly the same way uh, but just that the plugins is different uh, and there are some more features available than compared to uh, than compared to specflow itself because they have the author has ordered some added some more features uh, in uh, in this particular um, uh, tool uh, than compared to what uh, specflow was really having and if you just go to the github uh, of this rec and roll you can see that the author is gaspari nagi who is the actual original author of specflow as well so yeah, there we go. You can see that this guy, he is pretty prominently famous on this uh, BDDB spec flow. So he is the still the same author of the uh, of the rec and roll as well. So uh, if you're going to be starting BDD uh, with the C sharp dot net, and if your company is going to use that, then I would recommend you to just go with rec and roll, not spec flow anymore. So spec flow is dead. Right. So we are going to see how we are going to start working with the rec and roll all the way from the scratch uh, in year 2025. And we'll see what changes have happened and how efficient rec and roll has turned out from Specflow itself. So before we get into the Specflow itself, let's we'll talk about the behavioral driven development a bit more so that you can understand what the context is all about. So the first one is this one, right? Let's say you are a, uh, you are a test engineer uh, and in a company and you want to be testing your application, then you'll be referring quite a lot of different requirements documents, a lot of Confluence pages, a lot of Azure documentations or, or a lot of Excel sheets or whatever that you have got. You'll be reading through all of these requirements. We'll be talking with your business stakeholders, you'll also be talking about business analyst or your, uh, your team. And then you get all the requirements and then you put them all together as an uh, test cases in an Excel sheet, uh, and then you call them as test cases, right? That's what you do as a test engineer all the time. It's not just about test engineers. Sometimes even developers does that uh, if they have time, and then they they put all of them in one single Excel sheet, uh, and then they share among the team, and then that we call that as, as the test um, uh, test cases, which can be used to test our system efficiently. But if we are going to be automating the test cases from these kind of excel sheets uh, then uh, we as a like the automation test engineer have to go refer these excel sheets uh, as the source of truth uh, to see what they can automate because automation test engineers are going to be focusing just on automating the test cases uh, while they mostly don't bother about the requirement a lot which they should not be they should be so so essentially, yeah, that, that's what it is, right? The, the, the automation engineers are going to be referring to all these documentations as well. Um, but sometimes they do refer the Excel sheet a lot and they get the details out from uh, that and then they start writing things over there. And the context that they have got is from the Excel sheet. And this Excel sheet now becomes a source of truth, not just for the automation test engineer, but also for the developers who is going to be autom uh, who is going to be testing the application uh, if they have built things correctly or not. And while this is now starting to become as a source of truth, it can become over cumbersome if you're going to be putting all of these in an in an uh, an Excel sheet because Excel sheet is quite very hard to read through. Sometimes it becomes even more cumbersome if you're going to have a lot of different alignment issues and things of that nature. And this Excel sheet is also very static. It is not going to be dynamic. It can't be really used for doing quite a lot of different uh, programmatical operation if you don't write macros. And welcome to this 
BDD with uh, Rack and Roll, which is going to uh, bridge the gap between the uh, between the uh, between the documentation with the Excel sheets uh, and uh, with the Excel sheet itself, because you're going to be writing everything as a uh, what is called as a feature file uh, in the Rack and Roll. Uh, and then you write everything as a behavioral driven development fashion. So if you're not really heard about behavioral driven development, behavioral driven development is a concept which came from test driven development really, but just that it is going to be in a cucumber style Gherkin format. So while we say Gherkin, it's basically like a plain English text that you write. Let's say given I go to this website and I go click this link and I enter this username and password and I click the submit button. And then I see the home page. See, this is like a plain English text, but you write in a Gherkin format. So what I just told right now is actually a Gherkin format itself. Like it has got given when then in that uh, whole sentence that I was talking about. So if you just go to the uh, website, let's say this eaapp.swami.com website over here, uh, if I want to write this, if I want to automate this particular application or maybe this site in a Gherkin format, I will say given I navigate to this particular website and I click the uh, login button, when I enter the username as admin and password as password and I click the login button, then I see the home page. See, I'm using that given when and then those words um, which are mainly for the gherkin formats really that's what is the gherkin syntax in here uh, it's no big deal and they have got some table structures they also have got some details in terms of how you um, use with the scenario outlines and features and things so we'll be talking about all these things in this particular uh, series that we're going to be talking uh, but at least for now you got a basic hints of how this entire gherkins and things of that nature are really really um, panning out in the gherkin world there are many discussions like people don't really want to go with BDD as such because BDD is act as like an extra wrapper on the top of your existing test automation code, which makes things even more complicated. But there are some companies who really use the BDD with wreck and roll. And there are teams which are still relying on this because they, they think that it's pretty good. Uh, and this so this this whole series is for them who really like them uh, and maybe who are against the BDD uh, with wreck and roll or BDD concept itself. And this course is not for you guys. Just shut down it right now. All right. Last that said, I'm going to get into the uh, the wreck and roll part with the Visual Studio 2022 and with Windows 11 operating system. So if you have a Mac operating system like me, uh, and if you like a Rider IDE, I also recommend you to go with that because Rider IDE also has got the wreck and roll plugin for uh, to work with the, the the cucumber format. Well, as I said, I'm gonna go with the the most common audience of this wreck and roll who are gonna be using Windows most of the time, and also Visual Studio 2022 most of the time, and also Community Edition most of the time. So that, that this entire series is for them. So as I said, the prerequisite of this entire course is you need to have Windows 11 machine and also you need to have Visual Studio 2022 installed like how I did. And also you need to have .NET 8 or above installed within your machine. If you install Visual Studio, you will get .NET 8 anyways. So yeah, that's no wonder. Uh, so I am in my uh, Mac operating system, but I have virtualized this Windows 11. So I am in my Windows 11 right now. And I'm gonna start creating the, uh, or start installing the uh, Rec and Roll right now. So that is this uh, this whole entire video for today. Uh, and then we'll write a simple code and then we'll start from there. So the first thing is I'm gonna to go to the extensions over here to install the Rec and Roll because Rec and Roll itself needs to work with this Visual Studio uh, like how you use any other tools. So if you just go to the Visual Studio, go to manage extensions, you should see there are a lot of different tools available. Look at that, like REST API client code generator, uh, .NET upgrade assistant, EF core power tool, uh, blah, blah, blah. There are so many different tools, right? And these tools are built because they need to work with your Visual Studio seamlessly. Similarly, because you're going to be using this Rec and Roll, which is also a tool which should work with your Visual Studio as such, even for execution purpose, you need to install that tool from this extension manager. So you just uh, search for Rec and Roll, something like that. And you'll notice that there is a 
extension over here. And it says that this rec and roll is an open source Cucumber style BDD test automation framework for .NET. Uh, it has been created to reboot Specflow project. Look at that. Now I'm going to install this particular rec and roll of Visual Studio 2022. And it tells you that you need to, the changes are scheduled. You need to close Visual Studio 2022. So only if you close Visual Studio 2022, you will get the installation prompt coming up for you. Uh, if it works, uh, but it's not coming up. Oh, there we go. So this is installer comes in, and you are going to be basically installing everything. Uh, I mean, that the, the rack and roll is currently installing over here. All right, well, this is happening. I'm also going to tell you that this is just the installation of the rack and roll tools within your Visual Studio 2022 IDE. And once this is installed, uh, you will see that you are going to get uh, a templates in Visual Studio 2022 so that you can use the rec and roll to create a project structure as such. So you see that, look at that. The installation is done and I'm going to uh, hit close and I'm going to open the Visual Studio 2022 over here and hopefully um, you should see a lot of things now. So if you go create a new project, you will notice that there is a new rec and roll project coming in over here and it says new on the top. So you're gonna be seeing the exact same thing if you're installing the rec and roll for the first time. So basically, while you install this uh, extensions of rec and roll, you really installed a whole tool in Visual Studio. Uh, and now that gives the ability uh, for you to show this logo of rec and roll there. And also it tells you that you can create a new project template from uh, from the scratch and things of that nature. So let me go choose this project template. It is pretty much like the console application that you create or a, or, or a, a test project that you create. Pretty much exactly the same way that it's happening over here. And I'm gonna hit next and you will notice that it is gonna show me the wizard, pretty much like how you create a console application project. And I'm going to say uh, rec and roll project uh, one, uh, maybe I'm going to say, yeah, rec and roll, uh, rec and roll test project, because this is a test project. Uh, and I'm going to hit create. And it's asking you which framework that you're going to be using, uh, NUnit and MS test. And I'm going to say no MS test. I'm going to choose uh, NUnit, or maybe I can even choose XUnit, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to choose NUnit for now. Uh, and I'm going to hit create. So that's going to create a new project for me uh, with the uh, rec and roll, uh, SaaS and .NET 8 and uh, the uh, end unit for me. And look at that. There is a folder structure being created because we have used this template, the project template. It creates a folder structure and also adds the dependencies for me over there. Look at that. It's It's adding all the dependencies. It's just restoring it over there and once it, everything is installed you'll notice that like everything comes up pretty quickly so you see that what are the plugins which is added rec and roll dot n unit n unit n unit 3 test adapter uh, and microsoft net uh, test sdk so there are so many things being added here automatically because we have chosen n unit as the test framework uh, or test runner and then we have chosen the rec and roll there and see that we have got a features which says calculator dot feature file this is the feature file which I was talking about, guys. This is the feature file, uh, which is actually um, the one which is coming from the rec and roll itself. Look at that. It's also showing me a welcome wizard. It says uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to hit just close because I'm fine. Uh, now that we have got the feature files in here, and this is the Gherkin format which I was talking about. Look at that, what it says. It's a feature which is shown in blue color, which means it's actually a keyword. Uh, and there is this name of the feature as calculator. It can be anything, calculator, test, uh, feature. You can just name it whatever. But this thing, you can't name anything. It should be the keyword, which is reserved keyword. Should always be featured there. And there is a at symbol uh, followed by some text, which is basically um, which is basically a tag. So you can say, because we are test engineers, we always write a lot of um, categories of our test we can say like smoke test and this can be a regression uh, test or it can be a sanity test whatever that you name it um, so those things you can write it over here uh, and, uh, and this blue color again is again a keyword of gherkin syntax it says scenario and i'm gonna say add two numbers and i'm gonna say given it's again blue color which means the keyword uh, the first number is 50 and the second number is 70 when the two numbers are added 
then the results should be 120. So this is the given when and then format of the BDD comes in over here. That's all guys, see, this is the uh, this is the actual Gherkin format. This is how you actually do things uh, in the BDD format and everything just boils down over here. And most importantly note that this, these texts, like the plain English text that you are seeing over here are currently being mapped with the C sharp code. So while I say C sharp code, these step definitions that you are seeing over here are currently talking with these English texts that you have got. And this is happening because there is a uh, there is a magic going on behind the scene. That is the power of this uh, spec, uh, this not spec, flow, I'm sorry, uh, rack and roll. So if I try to build this entire solution over here, see how this calculator feature will have an arrow there suddenly, which was not there before. Just expand this. There will be a uh, there will be a auto generated file from the rack and roll. Unfortunately, I'm not getting a logo there. I should be getting a rack and roll ro logo there, but I'm not really getting it. Probably it should get once I close it and open it again, maybe. But it's not coming through there. Uh, but now you look at that. If I just go right click this, you see that I get an option here. It says go to definition. It's pretty much like how you write a method in C-sharp and then you click that go to implementation, go to definition. The same thing comes for uh, the step definition as well over here uh, in the rack and roll. And then you can just go to the definition and look at that. It just brings you up this um, step definitions over here. And uh, there is a binding attributes and there are some given attributes and there are so many things happening there. I mean, don't worry about all these things. We are going to talk about that in our next lecture. But for now, you see that we have created a super simple project all the way from the scratch and we have created a scenario and we have did something which has uh, created this folder structure from the template uh, and we have got some things over here which is amazing so this is how you do everything from the scratch in the rack and roll uh, in our next lecture we talk about how we can write a super simple feature uh, to perform a login operation with our eaapp.somi.com website which i was just showing you this guy to perform a login operation um, like getting to the login page, entering this, 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 and clicking the login button. Those things we are going to talk to, try to write it in a in a, in a scenario fashion. Uh, I mean, we're not going to really perform any action there directly, uh, but uh, for that you need Playwright or any other tools to play around with the UI stuff. But at least I'm going to write those scenarios. I will explain you how you can um, how you can write everything in the Gherkin format. That's what we'll be discussing in our next lecture. Thank you.